everyone. Uh, just wanted to jump in real quick before we get started and say a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Uh, thank you for supporting this class. And um, I look forward to creating new videos and new content with your support. So thank you very much. Um, your name should be appearing in this general area right now. Thanks. Um, so uh, on the on the subject of recording and, and Zoom and things, um, I, I'm not totally sure how the late Egyptian class is gonna work because of the number of people, but I was just looking into it and it looks like I can get a like large audience Zoom. You can like purchase a large audience pass for a meeting or something like this. Um, and then you can have up to a thousand people. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do for the class for a little while. So it's just gonna be like, you know, um, like a uh, freshman lecture sort of thing where it's like 300 people for wow. a while. People are How in many it. people uh, were in this class when it started? Um, when it you first had started- two, I two think, sessions, right? I started with four sessions actually, because oh, I had four. 80 people. I was oh, trying okay, to keep it yeah. to below 20. Um, and that was just, I, it was, it made sense that I thought to do that. Uh, I don't think it was a bad choice. Um, but for one thing, it was like teaching the same class four times in a row is like completely mind numbing. Um, I always say that an hour of teaching is basically like three hours of, of other kind of work because for some reason it's just, it just is, I don't know. It just, it just requires a lot of energy. <laughs> It takes a lot of mental energy somehow. And then, it, so four, oh, yeah. four classes straight was just like, that was unsustainable. Um, but then what normally happens with these kind of things is that a lot of people sort of shop the class to say like, um, how curious am I about this subject? And then they, they realize that it's a lot of work and they're not as curious as they thought they were. And so they just kind of stop coming, which is totally fine. I, I, I wanna encourage people to do that because, you know, there's too much in the world for you to learn every single thing, but you can go explore things. And if something clicks for you, then you should do it. Um, Cause you know, that's just yeah. part of like finding happiness. So I definitely want people to come check it out and not feel obligated to stay with it forever. Um, so I do expect that that, so the number right now is, I think it's 260 something is my, is the number I have right now. Um, I haven't checked in a while. Yeah. It's a lot of people. Um, it wasn't, wasn't there going to be like a requirement for Coptic or something like that? There was going to be, and I decided to not do that. Um, so I, I wanted there to be some advantage of having Coptic, and there still is because there I'm including Coptic with all of the words wherever possible. And um, I'm going to use Coptic more or less throughout in the same way that when we discuss readings and things, um, I'll often reference hieroglyphs, but it's gonna be more frequent. There's just gonna be a lot of Coptic in the class. So by having done Coptic, you there's just an additional layer to the class for you. And I thought that was kind of an appropriate point of balance. Um, I didn't wanna strictly require Coptic so I went back and forth on this. I thought that I would require Coptic and then it was like, well, you know, that just, that excludes a huge percentage of the people who would be interested in this. And that's, you know, really not, not on mission for me to like make, to, to do any sort of gatekeeping. Cause kind of the point of this, like this is an experimental thing where I try to like teach this subject with no gatekeeping whatsoever. Um, I think that's the way of the future, but so I wanted to get rid of that. And then I thought that like, well, I'll have a, an active class where people are here just like we are right now. And then a, um, like a, a listening in class. Um, and that's, that's still conceivable, but that still puts it at like, um, you know, less than 5% of the people in the class are actually participating. So I don't really want to do that either. Um, how are the XR, how are the exercises going to work with so many people? That I have no idea. I think um, probably with a randomizer. So I think I'm just going to, it's going to be a sort of lottery thing. I'll just randomly select people who 
who can answer questions and I'll just have a list. Like I can do that really easily with a random number generator and just resort the list of names according to the random numbers and then just go down the list and then I'll just randomize it again the next week. So you'll have some probability of getting called on for any given question. Um, and that probability will obviously be proportional to the number of people who show up in the class, which means that it will increase as the class goes on because plenty of people will you know, decide it's not their thing um, as time goes by and the class will get smaller. That's how I expect it to go. I don't know for sure yet. I mean, this whole thing is, it's just a new thing. It's just I think about a coptic as... choice is a good one, if I may say so. In other words, okay. um, to say, um, look, we're going to reference it frequently. We're going to make you curious about Coptic. It's not that arcane thing that only a few people want to know. Maybe you want to study Coptic after this. Um, yeah. But not making it the gatekeeper because there are just so few people in the world that know Coptic. And then. And the, hmm? Yeah, there's no reason to learn Coptic from, from zero. I mean, unless you're a member of the Coptic Orthodox Church or, or you have some kind of connection, there's, there's no one encouraging you to learn Coptic. And I didn't, I started learning Middle Egyptian before I started learning Coptic. And I'm now- I mean, I mean the Coptic. Egyptian uh, Coptic revival movement is trying to currently revive Coptic use in Egypt. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think it should be encouraged. I, um, but I think that there, there's an element of like marketing in, in everything, right? Ev everyone's in marketing, whether they realize it or not. Uh, so it's, it's better to just go ahead and realize it. And the Coptic revival movement, a lot of its um, appeal comes from this connection to the ancient past. And the point of entry for that is Egyptian hieroglyphs for most people. Um, so we don't wanna block that port of entry for sure. We wanna make sure that people are, are accessing this subject. You know, there's no wrong way to come to a new subject. And, um, and I think what I'll probably do is run the late Egyptian class and, and include Coptic in it a whole bunch and then probably rerun this class afterwards, after it's finished. So um, I, I expect there will be a lot more people interested in Coptic after that. And then they can kind of, they can support each other in that way. How about Middle Egyptian? I really don't want to teach new learners Middle Egyptian. Um, I mean, like with late Egyptian or something like that as a requirement. At, yeah, with late Egyptian as a requirement, I, I can see doing that. I think that's a great idea. Uh, I hadn't really thought about it until you said it just now, but that, that makes a lot of sense to me. So really my idea is that anyone who studies Egyptian language, the ideal pathway would be to go Coptic, late Egyptian, or even Coptic, Demotic, late Egyptian, middle Egyptian, old Egyptian because we, we know more and more the later things are. So it makes sense to start what we know and then you know, get into the wilderness gradually with adequate preparation. I think starting people with Middle Egyptian makes absolutely no sense except for one uh, all trumping factor, which is that um, people wanna learn hieroglyphic inscriptions. So that like that one thing, people wanna read the statue in the museum and that's written in middle Egyptian that trumps everything else, including a um, objectively superior um, pathway to learning the subject, uh, it trumps everything. And I, I, I think changing that is, is gonna have to be kind of gradual because it requires uh, reaching people in some way and convincing people that know nothing about the subject that um, there, there, there's a good way to go about this. And it might not make sense to you right now, but like a lot of people who know the subject very well are all in agreement that this is a better way to do it. So this is what you should do. And if you're really excited about learning hieroglyphs and you, you wanna know it well, you need to take this path because this is the best path. And right now, no one is saying that because there's nothing for them to lean on to say that with. So my class is um, it has multiple simultaneous roles. One of them is kind of a proof of concept that um, you know, it's a good idea to start with late Egyptian. And um, I mean, on some level, I know that that's true, but, and, and I think a lot of people do, but there's just nothing to point to. So I'm just trying to create something that we can point to and say like, this is the way we should be doing it. So yeah. Um, also, uh, if I know a lot of people are probably watching these videos and I, I've gotten a few questions. I meant to send out an email to everyone, but I'm just so reluctant to, to spam 300 people more than absolutely necessary. 
So I'm, I'm sending out an email on July 21st with all the getting started materials. That's about a month from now. Um, and I might need to send an email to the whole group to say that I'm doing that just so people don't get nervous that I forgot about them. I didn't. Um, pretty much working on it all the time, actually. But it's, yeah, it's not time yet. OK, speaking of time, let's read some exercises. Let's see how many exercises we have. 36, oh my gosh, a non-prime number of exercises. What are the chances? It's even a square. What? It's a square of a non-prime number. All right. Oh my gosh. And it's the square of the number of people we have. Wow. I think somebody is somebody's skipping. Okay, so it's not the square of the number of people we have, but that's okay. Um, all right. So how's that gonna work? Probably do four and three. Okay, uh, Moes, do you wanna do the first four? Sure. Uh, so the first one, Nimpe Peiremen Nuta Eshao Muta Erof J. Johannes. So who is this man of God who they call John? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Entof de Hoof Nai Sharon and Pefraste. So he himself will come to us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so this ho'of, we learned it in the last chapter, it's kind of just an intensifier. Uh, it, this also could mean he also will come to us tomorrow. So that ho'of is the way that um, Coptic says this thing where it's like, uh, she will come to us tomorrow and also he will come to us tomorrow. Uh, Coptic says he himself will come to us tomorrow. So you could translate it either way. Uh, context is really gonna tell you the right, right reading there. Um, what, what's yeah. the literal translation of ho? Uh, his his body is the etymological meaning of it. He his body, uh, all right. which literally doesn't make any sense at all. Um, he will come to us bodily tomorrow. Like of course he will. He's not gonna. Uh, I didn't expect that he was gonna like astral project himself over here. Actually, uh, it makes sense because uh, if he tries to say trying to say uh, self, himself, he himself, mm -hmm. then it makes sense. Yeah, it's not that big a stretch to say his body it means himself. Um, yeah, I think that's a good point. It's, it's not we bad. say somebody, anybody in English, it's, it's, sim it's similar at least. Yeah, you definitely do don't interpret it literally. Like there, there's somebody in the parking garage. <laughs> like You don't automatically call the cops. Yeah, I love somebody sounds weird when you think about that. Um, <laughs> Um, isn't it a plural of member actually? The the whole. It is. Yeah. So, so how is ha is member, and then how is a standard Egyptian word for body, but it literally means the members all joined together. Um, and this is a, a cool place where you get like some um, ancient Egyptian metaphysical concepts still embedded in this language, because um, a human being isn't is understood as a sort of collection of diverse parts. In ancient Egyptian thought. That's very, very clear from the way they refer to people and their beliefs about the afterlife. Um, we tend to think of ourselves as a sort of um, interconnected whole um, that's indivisible, but it's very clear that ancient Egyptian thought did not consider a person or their personality to be that way. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we found him walking by himself to the monastery. That's right. Yeah, uh, literally, uh, we found him. But or we fell idiot. up, we fell upon him. Yeah, we fell upon him, uh, which means find idiomatically. Good. Yeah. Uh, Ahoine Pistewe Erof, uh, Henkowe de Empu Pistewe. Um, some believed him, uh, but uh, some others did not believe. Yeah, good. And this translating this de as but is the right way to go here. This is uh, one of the few places where de actually has a very clear meaning. Uh, some believed. 
him or believed in him. Others did not believe. Okay. Yeah. Good job, Moaz. Um, let's see who's next. GT, do you want to take four? Yep, perfect. Um, Mede indicaios sotum in chace in neoether nove. Um, the righteous do not listen to the words of the sinners. Yeah, weird sentence, but whatever. I'm not going to dig into it. <laughs> Who do they listen to? Where Where are these non sinners that we're supposed to be listening to? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Six. Ne share manachos ti ne hov in kij evol hin ne hou et imel. The monks, uh, well, so I was a bit confused. I'm not sure what the ne is doing there at the beginning, but otherwise I got it as like the monks sell their handmade things uh, in those days. Yeah, I think that so ne share is the imperfect converter of the aorist or of the habitual. So mm. it's uh, someone doing something in a customary way in the past. So often we translate this as they used to, they used to sell, yes. the monks used to sell. You can say they were wont to sell, mm. to be a little want. fuzzy, right? That's a cool yeah. word. That's pretty good, yeah. Okay, then seven, nade unuk, in Miche so him uh a great crowd um gathered in their house oh um had gathered in his house yeah uh hit him hit him pefe uh-huh not at at is a fine translation but i just want to uh get a little more precise i think i said in oh yeah, so um, um, like before. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. so literally like, upon the door first. of. Mm. Okay. So before or in front of or something like that. And then, um, so this is the qualitative and you can make a qualitative sentence like this with, with the imperfect converter. So it's like uh, a great crowd was gathered before his house, something like that. Okay, okay and then Eight, impiakin adike adoi, payot impialao. Um. So, uh, do not find a uh, fault in me, uh, my father. Um, impialao. Um, I did not do anything. Yeah, very good. I did not do anything. It's the exact right translation. Um, yeah, In incidentally, it's not, I have not done anything because it's the negative past, not exactly the negative perfect, which is a slightly different form. Um, okay. Good job, GT. Randy, do you want to do four? Sure. Uh, number nine. Nruhe apasan kata on et free. In the evening, the brother returned again to his cell. That's right. Yeah, um, and this it's kind of um, it's kind of an adverbial sort of construction. It's literally in evening, but um, Egyptian often does this thing where it uses like uh, adjectives or nouns of time in an adverbial sense. So it's like um, eveningly, um, Chris. Perspicularly, perspicularly, the brother returned himself again to his son. Not a word I get to say very often. in <laughs> None of the prophecy. None of the prophets are received in his no prophet is received or welcome in his own village. Yep, that's it. Uh, this, I think, is a direct uh, quote from the New Testament. Yeah, it is. I looked it up. It's it's identical. Oh, cool. Yeah, so this is something that Jesus says when the, the people of, I think, Nazareth? Is it specifically Nazareth? The people are like, they yeah, don't go so. there because they're not friendly to them. Yep. 
anokte o dina hi thought e sahai in an chaje en tau shope. I myself will uh, start uh, writing the things which happen. Yeah, good. What is this literally he taught? Um, to, 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 uh, to give a hand to undertake. I, I don't remember exactly. He is like throw generally. Is it from, uh, and, is it from Hiwe? Yeah. Um, and it's the pre pre nominal form of that. And then to'ot, what's the suffix pronoun on to'ot? Is it just the zero, the first yeah. person singular? Exactly. So to'ot requires a suffix pronoun, but because this is first person, the suffix pronoun is just an empty um, thing, empty morphine. Shapsanch nefshere pen uyot in agatos. He nourishes his children like a good father. Yeah, very good. Yeah, Saanch, um, Sa Saanesh is, it comes from the, the S causative, the old um, Egyptian one type causative of Anesh uh, to live. So it's like cause to live, but then it means something like nourish or, or look after, um, you know, however you need to translate it. You could say he looks after his children or he, he nourishes his children, whatever a parent does for their children, that kind of thing. Causes that they live. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see, Mustafa, do you wanna do four? Yeah, okay. try my best, uh, you know. Afjos naiche temrok enekbok ebol. Uh, he said, uh, "This to me." Said, he said, "He said to me, uh, Tam rock. Uh, Tam is a negative." Yeah. Or, oh no, no, it's from Tom. Tom to uh to to seal or to shut. Ah, okay. Is yeah, rock uh, and a book and go away. He, yeah. I don't know what rock means. <laughs> uh, your mouth. <laughs> okay, rock. Uh, yes. tam, uh, close your mouth and go away. Yep, that's what he said, he said to me. Close your mouth and go away. <laughs> He's very rude, whoever he is. Yes, this is what he yeah. said. Akire and nai and talk my walk. Did you? Ira, did you do? Uh, why did you do <laughs> to me? It's not to me this time. This time it's uh, these things. These and talk not trans untranslatable actually here or you and talk you mawak. Uh, my work actually uh, uh, uh is a, a do this is the the core of the word uh, but oh it's uh why yeah, do to be alone uh, okay why why uh, why did you do this do this. Uh, I, 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 I'm shocked. Okay, so you you uh you don't need the word why. There's no word uh, why in here. It's did you do these things? You alone. Did you alone? You do alone. These things? Okay, yeah. So did, did you do did these you things do... alone? Yeah. Uh, let's say somebody had created like a lot of things that took yeah. a lot of work. Did you do these things all by yourself? Yeah. Let me try. Nimpet nasa no 
Nasanoshen e ane e ane nene yote mo Nasanoshen actually na Sanosh okay san is the monger something like it could be uh, but in this case i think it's the verb uh saanch which means like to nourish uh, okay take care of uh, uh, and this san, is okay prepronominal san. so sanushin then can we say uh, the uh, s from the at the head of uh, word is yeah. the causative it is old causative uh, will nourish us yep we nourish us uh, our fa our father did mo die that yeah uh, what who who we who will nourish us uh, when our father die yeah um and then this is so it's so this remember tenses in coptic tend to be relative tenses so this is our father died and then it's who will yeah. take care of us now that our parents have died okay so it's, this happened before and then we have the circumstantial yeah, yeah. to make a subordinate um so yeah who will take care of us now that our parents have died weird yeah afka Afkarov, uh, Afkarov, Mpf, Oweshep, Lao, uh, he, he put his mouth, uh, Mpf, Oweshep, Lao, uh, did uh, actually uh, any, he said he didn't answer anything. Yeah. So he he yeah. first uh, Afka, then he close your mouth, his mouth, something like that. Yeah, it's like close. I mean, ka really means like leave Put. in this case, but it's like he he shut up, he stopped talking, and he didn't answer anything. Yeah. Yeah, literally, he left his mouth and he didn't answer anything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Dante. I got four if you want them. Sure. Okay, these are all yours. Johannes de Hoof of Moon Vol Fue He Pesha Pesha Ie. So, uh, and John alone or himself or also. Uh, you could say, uh, he remained dwelling in the desert, or actually in the glossary, it says with the circumstantial, it means he continued dwelling yeah. in the desert. Yeah, exactly. He continued to dwell in the desert. Yeah. He went right on dwelling in the desert. So that whole ho of thing, it could mean he by himself, or he also, or it could mean any of those things, or? Yeah, it really could. Um, in this case, without context, it's hard to know exactly what it means. But right. maybe, um, maybe Johannes is a Bedouin or something like that. <laughs> I think it's I think it's John the Baptist, but also this doesn't really apply to John the Baptist because he didn't he didn't continue living in the desert. Things went very badly for him. Yes. Um, so, because in the in the chapter, you know, Lambden he says that ho o it sort of means the same thing as mao a. It does. But also has the meaning of like also two or more ever. So I, I was confused by that because does that mean it means, you know, alone, but also at the same time or pick one of them, whichever fits the context or it was a little confusing, but it's no it big could, deal. I feel like it could lean towards the, the alone meaning sometimes in a very specific context where it's quite clear. But uh, the Mawa'a form is really the thing that means himself okay. alone so it's, so it's more likely to mean also or yeah yeah okay um yeah 
Okay. Translation is good. Entre ruhe de chope mef matetes au sou hem pema et emau. So when the and when evening happened or when evening came, his disciples gathered um, in that place. Yes, sorry for the beeping in the background. It's a, the washing machine. Um, yeah, so when evening came about, his disciples gathered in that place. Good. And tuo shan et recho em pema kotek e pekhi emin emok. Um, I do not want that you stay with me. Return yourself to your own house. Yeah. Uh, with me, though, in Pema. Oh, in this place, sorry. Yeah. You could also say here. And with me might be the meaning. Um, but just to double check the literal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want you to stay. I don't want you to stay here. Go back to your own house. So some kind of so, something went wrong there. Um, how he to o tu e kot en unoch en erpe ere tefape na po et pe ma aas. So they either began or like endeavored to build mm -hmm. um, a great temple. Its head, or I guess, you know, the top of it will reach to the, the sky itself or the very sky or something. Yeah, exactly. It's Babel. Yeah. Okay. Good job, Dante. Well done. Okay. Um, full, full marks. And last but certainly not least, Aurelio. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Shoman uh, Mai in Kowe or Kowe the Aukto et Polis. Three of them remained with me. Mm -hmm. The rest, but the rest went to the went back to the city. Yeah. Um really others. There is a word, sepe means means remainder in the sense hmm. of rest. Okay. But yeah, it, what you said what you said is correct. Yeah, the others went back to the city. Okay. Um in Kovede Sechen Kejome. The other things are written in in another book. It's one, I guess. Yeah, very profound statement here. Other right. things are written in another book. Right. Yeah. Okay. In the refer novede. Meusanch no meusanish neushere genentole of choice. The sinners are not wont to raise their children in the commandments of the Lord. That's right. And finally, Aukotu on a sip no sipsopif. Um Aukotu. They will return again. That, sorry, that's a past tense. Um, they returned to entreat him or to yeah. beg him. Yeah, and they, they did it again. So they, they again. yeah. Wait, well, how do you say that? They, they once they again, they didn't treat him. him. They treated yeah. him again. Yeah. We have to totally change the word order in English, but it, you got the idea for sure. Well, is the Aoko to saying like they came physically back to entreat him again, or it's saying like they came back to entreating him, like they they returned, they were doing it before, and now they like doing it again or something. Could be either one. It's uh, it's ambiguous yeah, it's hard, with that respect. It's hard to tell, because then it would be like the they they again again to entreat him. Doesn't doesn't. Uh, I think what you could say in English is yeah, you're right. You could say in English maybe they turned again to entreating him, like yeah. You can literally yeah. uh, uh, do it like a one by one translation that way. Turn again yeah. to doing something. Yeah, that yeah. would probably work. I think that works. Uh, okay, so we're, we're going through again. I have Moaz. Moaz, do you want to do three of these? Uh, sure. 
Het we o teten misje men netten reo en tege. Why are y'all fighting uh, with each other in this way? Yeah. Uh, this should be. This is a mistake. This should be a teten. I can't think of a better case where you would expect to have the second tense than right here. Yeah, I wonder also why there wasn't. Uh, it was the way Lambda. It's the way Lambda decided to do it, but yeah, it doesn't sound right to me. I really want the etetin, but no matter. You got the meaning right, and then it's with with y'all's companions, so with each other. Yeah. Okay, so he uh, to the an en Rome and polis. Uh, so et agora. Uh, so at dawn, the men of the city gathered uh, at the agora. Yeah, good. Okay. Aser huta evol je apes hai chenarike eros. She was afraid uh, because her husband found something wrong with her. Yep. That's what it says. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great job. Uh, GT, do you want to read some more? Uh, I'll pass for now, but thanks. Okay. Yeah, I got the impression from uh, when you spoke up earlier that you were hoping to, to pass. So no worries there, as always. Uh, Randy, do you want to do these three? Sure. Nim. Uh, who is the one who heals the doctor himself? Yeah, physician. Physician, technically. But yeah. Who is he who heals the physician himself? Good. Anhe'en in snu, eu sanash, deru emin wa, efkai inhetu. We found our brothers uh, all nourished. We found our brothers all nourished. Mm -hmm. um, Quality they're, is good. They're not being one among them who was hungry. That's or right. Who is hungry. Yeah, or uh, you could say who was hungry too, because this is also the qualitative. And um, really, th there is no English tense that the qualitative translates reliably into. It means um, a present state that's the result of some past event. And English just doesn't have a verb tense that exactly corresponds to that. But your translation is good. Uh, so we found our brothers uh, well cared, all of them well cared for, there being uh, no one among them hungry. Did not show in Schlil Sharuhe. We will uh, we will keep praying until uh, uh, evening. That's right. We will keep praying until evening. Yeah, good. All right. And let's add Mustafa next. Yeah. All right. Three of these are for you. Let me, yeah, let me look at this. Is also uh, a story, uh, story, okay. Uh, uh, oh, and then and then you to know, um, pef matetes matetes eme mo, uh, only oa means. Uh, just one one one, yeah. one parents one of parents probably our parents okay um, our parents it, yeah because it's nenyote with the with the suffix um landon tends to be really precise about this if you saw this in a real coptic text there'd be no way of knowing whether it's our parents or the parents because they often say nenyote uh for just the yeah. plural but in this case, it's one of our parents or one of our fathers to know. To know, uh, no. Or actually, not uh, to know. 
I know, but I couldn't call the knowledge. No, this is um, this is send ten nows send. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, send yeah, uh, send his uh, people, his students, students, students singular, half matetes to uh, die, but full. <laughs> uh, this Holy. this mau means water. Yeah, it's same thing. <laughs> fill water. He sent him to fill water. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I just think something like uh, in ancient Mesopotamia, a uh, story of uh, Hammur loss of Hammurabi. If you are not guilty, you won't uh, swallow uh, in water. The the river ordeal yeah for the accused yeah i don't think it's anything that um dramatic i think it's just fill water like he has to go fetch water so yeah. he, he sent one of Actually, his disciples yeah. yeah my coptic a little bit uh clunky because <laughs> that's why we're here uh, because of the break well, no worries. What's the, okay? You're gonna nere, get some more nere, practice. Nere, yeah, yeah. Nere shote e de pe o well entry and mate. Nere imperfect convert. Shote. Uh, shote. Well. Okay. E, well, de pe o we is one cell. Far away. Oh, okay, far away. It's from uh, far away. Hawaii. Okay, uh, far away. The cell. A matter. Um, students. Very. Actually, yeah, very. A matter. Very far. So far away. Yeah. Far. So the well was the really cell. far away. Yeah. Good. The well was really far away from the cell. From the cell, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Afer Afer Posh Poship Po Po Pobesh. Yeah. Uh De E G Punok and a muff of er he did answer. Ovesh is uh uh, unconsciousness, so like forgetting, he forgot. Uh, what's that or something? Much. Yeah, Obish. Obish. okay. Uh, he did forgot, mm -hmm. For, forget, he said to say, G, G is take. He forget, he did for. Forget to take, uh, forget it to take the, uh, I don't know, no, with him. No, is rope. Yeah, okay. I, I know what. Uh, of R, he, he, he did forget to take the rope with him. Good. Yeah, he forgot to take the rope with him. All right, good job, Mustafa and um, and Dante. Aurelio, will you be upset if I give Dante the last three? Not a problem gonna, at all. Okay, you're getting short change three. I'm sorry. I you, did can the math do the, you can do why you can do the last one or if you want. So. Okay, I think that's fair. Or, yeah. Entrefe de echen to shote of imeche empef ine. Uh, so when he came to the well, mm -hmm. um, he understood that he did not bring with him the rope. Yeah, and notice this, you can actually translate it as a pluperfect. So when, when he, he came not, to the well, yeah, you yeah, realized yeah. that he hadn't brought the rope with him. Yeah, yeah, that would work good. And this is another mm -hmm. example of this, what we mean by like relative tense. Of ire en ushleil 
Afmute Fcho Amos Che Pshihi Pshi Pa Yot Pet Cho Amos Che Muh M Pangion M Mo. So um, he did a prayer. He called, he said, dummy object quote, oh well, yep. my father is the one that said, dummy object quote, fill the vessel with water. Good, yeah. All right, and Aurelio, how does the story end? All right. Awo and Teunu, Apmo, E. Epishoi, Le, E. Epshoi, Apson Much Empef Shoshu, Avo Apmo, Chmos on on Epefma. And right away the water went up. The brother or monk uh, filled his whatever we call that vessel, the, the Shoshu, his bucket basically. And the water returned um, once again to its place. Yeah, this uh, this change in vocabulary is a, a little confusing to me because angion I think of as as a bucket like made of wood, and a shoshu is like a, a pitcher, like ceramic. But whatever, I mean, it's a story. Yeah, and the water it it came up. The monk filled his pitcher, and the water sat down in its place again. Um, this is from uh, Life of Shenouda, I believe. Fits. If I remember correctly, yeah, it's a very Shenouda very well. type miracle. Like, mm. I mean, he calls upon divine providence for the most mundane of problems. Um, yeah. Mm. Oh well. It's you know sol solid miracle though. I'll give it a, I'll give it an eight out of ten as miracles go. Okay. So uh, that was all for lesson twenty eight. Lesson 29 is largely about the conditional. So there's this, um, it's a tripartite verb form uh, called the conditional where you have the, you have a eh plus suffix pronoun plus this infix shan and then infinitive. Um, so, and then the pre nominal form is ershan and then uh, subject and infinitive. So notice the, the position of the suffix is not exactly identical to the position of the noun. Uh, and then you negate it with tem like you do with all these really complicated, um, you know, complex verb forms. And that means if, so eshan sotem, if I hear, um, it can also be, I think this is the one that can be like when I hear or whenever I should hear, such and such would happen. Uh, so it's a way of expressing a, a conditional relationship uh, and there, there are other ways. So there's the conditional verb form. There's also these uh, prefixes that just kind of go on their own, a shope or sj. Um, this is a more sort of true conditional, like if it happens that such and such, then this thing will happen. Uh, so a shope, a pistewe enai, so if you believe this, or sj, sj pistewe enai, if, again, if you believe this. And then uh, with the circumstantial as the protasis. So, um, and then, and then so uh, us being in this place. Uh, oh, right, sorry, we're still on protasis. I got confused there. Um, yeah, so different ways of expressing a conditional. They do have a slightly different nuance. Uh, I think Leo de Poit liked to talk about this a lot. So this conditional is, it expresses more of a sort of generic premise, whereas this one, the Eshope or SJ ex expresses a specific circumstance. Uh, that is often, um, you know, literally possible in this exact moment. Uh, so you, you could be believing this right now. And if you are, this thing will happen as a result. Whereas um, Aishan is like, uh, anytime I do this, another thing happens as a result. And the circumstantial just works like the circumstantial. It's basically just a subordinator. So it's like, given that such was happening, another thing happened. And you're supposed to mentally connect them with one another. Uh, so those are the more vivid type conditions. They're also contrary to fact conditions like there are in any language. And those use, uh, no surprise here, the imperfect, uh, just like in English. If he were king, NFO in ERO. So if he were being king, such and such would happen. And then there's a past contrary to fact 
uh, if if you had. So n in top d pot ni if you had sold me the silver. Um, and an impact g pot uh, if you had not taken the silver, the money. Fenchurch, why? Really? You couldn't make it one hour? She gets lonely. She gets lonely so fast. It hasn't even been a whole hour yet since she was petted. This is, this is, this is why you shouldn't spoil your cat too much. Okay, where were we? Um, and then, so you get this Enna at the bunch at the front a bunch, which in normal Coptic text looks exactly like the Enna, uh, the focalizer that's normally used at the beginning of questions or or when there's something to focus on at the beginning of the sentence. You have to distinguish them. It's not normally all that hard because the the meaning makes it clear which one is needed. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail into all these different conditional types because even if I did spend a long time explaining them, you would need to study them directly anyway. Um, I'm kind of running through that quickly. There's also an unless type particle in Savail. So, you know, except that you believe such and such will happen. And then 29.2, uh, so new section and totally different topic. So just forget about conditionals now, uh, come back to them later. There are these things called uh, na adjectives or adjective verbs. These always begin with an N, with an N, the letter N, new. Um, we don't actually know where that, uh, that na prefix came from, but it started appearing on adjective verbs in late Egyptian. And these are kind of uh, very narrow and fixed in their forms. By the time you get to Coptic, they used to be much more widespread. And they, they're just adjective verbs. Uh, just like if you learn, um, you know, Middle Egyptian adjective verbs, these work exactly the same way. So they have a nominal subject. So nesa uh, tefshime, so uh, his wife is beautiful, and nesos, she is beautiful. So there's a pre-nominal form, pre-pronominal form. Um, there's only like a dozen or so of them. Lambden gives us a few of them here. Uh, Na'a, great. You can see, if you know any Middle Egyptian, you can see this is related to the, the word a'a, that means great. Um, nanu, or there's also nane, pre-nominal form, and nanu, pre-pronominal form, means good. It actually comes from... Ani, that means uh, like beautiful. Uh, nese, neso, I can't remember the etymology of that, but it means beautiful. Uh, nesfo'o comes from um, all the, like the wise, like seba, meaning learning. So it's like a wise person. Uh, nashe, nasho, that comes from asha, meaning numerous. And necho, I don't know the etymology of that either, but it means ugly, apparently. Um, would that be iku, I think? And then they work exactly like you think, prome et nanuf, the good man. Uh, and then the, the suffix pronoun agrees with the, the subject that it modifies, or the, with the antecedent in this case, because it's a relative clause. So prome et nanuf, the man who is good. The man who he is good, literally. Prome et nese tefshime, uh, the man who, the man who his wife is beautiful. Yeah, the man whose wife is beautiful. And then you can use converters, like put the imperfect converter, nenanuf, uh, he was good, urome and anuf, uh, a man who is good. Centric, why? I don't know why she does this. For attention, I think. Nayat, blessed. Now that has the word I in it. I forget the exact etymology, nayat, nayat. What does that mean? It's like it's like good-eyed or something. Great-eyed, not a yacht, I think. Not totally sure about the etymology, but you get it. It means blessed. And um, here's a great example. Nayatu en en ref er ir. Nayatu en en ref er irine. So blessed are the peacemakers, obviously from uh, Matthew chapter five, I think. So and that's all the all of the um, beatitudes uh, instead of. Beati sunt, it says, uh, nayatu, blessed are they who do whatever. And then a little bit about comparatives, which we've seen plenty of times before. So, e eh is the typical uh, preposition that you use with comparatives. So, nef o and noch and nef sneu, he was greater than his brothers. Um, and then you can also you can use this en huo e, eh, like more than. Uh, 
uh, with an adjective, uh, the, the even greater, the more greater one, the more great one. And uh, you can also use para in place of e eh as the um, preposition that identifies the comparison. Um, okay. And then the last thing in this chapter, oh my gosh, I'm going to finish on time for like the first time, maybe ever. Look at that. I should go off on a tangent just so I don't break my streak of going over time. All right, so uh, these nouns, these uh, inalienable nouns, but normally body parts. Um, and then also one that I had forgotten about, voice is also an inalienable one. So hrau, that you'll know that as heru in Middle Egyptian, the word that means voice or, or loud sound. And then hra, uh, like hraf, his voice. Don't see that very often, but it's a good one to remember. Hrat, foot, um, hra, face or voice. Um, hete, heart. Um, or tip edge, I never noticed that before. It's kind of like, it's like, it means front thing. So uh, yeah, and then hate, belly. Um, notice this is kind of confusing because the, the absolute form of heart is hate and the pre-pronominal form of belly is hate. So there's a, um, there's a homophone there, but they're, they're two different things. The, the word belly will always have a suffix pronoun after it. And then tuo, bosom, or just like, kind of like lap really. Then a few others, arage, end, um, quen, or quent, bosom, rin, or rint, name, swent, price, and sha'ant, nose. Quite a few of those. They're, they're fun, in my opinion. Um, kind of the last holdouts of the uh, possessive suffix pronouns, like you see in Old and Middle Egyptian. Uh, they're left on these this small set of nouns that are inalienable possessions like body parts or, or identifying features. That's kind of cool, bunch of vocabulary and then exercises. So are there any questions on lesson 29? We have less than 60 seconds to derail this, right? Yeah, what can you do? <laughs> oh, I could, but no, 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 let's do could. this for once. Let's do this for once. <laughs> All right, we're ending on time. Um, give yourselves a round of applause, everybody. And I will see y'all in a week for uh, lesson 29 and, and going over lesson 30. And then in two weeks, it will be our very last class. If all goes according to plan. So yeah, see y'all soon. Bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye.